Okay, now last time we talked about the thermodynamics and higher level fluid dynamics um, of a turbojet engine using ideal cycle analysis. Now let's get into a little bit more detail of what happens inside the components that do and extract work, the compressor and turbine. So this is going to be an introduction to turbo machinery. So, previously when we were looking at the thermodynamics in the cycle analysis, this told us what the overall effect of each component was. So, a temperature ratio and a pressure ratio across the compressor and turbine. But it didn't tell us anything about how those were achieved. Now, from the Navier-Stokes equations, It's possible to show that in the absence of heat transfer, the only way to change the total enthalpy of a fluid is with an unsteady process. For example, rotating blades. However, for the purposes of our analysis here, we can hide all that unsteadiness inside a control volume and just draw a picture like this. where we have going into our control volume some mass flow, velocity, and enthalpy going in steadily and leaving steadily mass flow, velocity, and enthalpy leaving steadily. Now in your fluids course I know you talked a little bit about turbo machinery and you may have seen something called the Euler turbine equation. And this is essentially the fundamental equation of turbo machinery. It's a combination of the energy and angular momentum e equations. So, I'm going to re-derive it briefly here using the following model of a blade row. There's a center line about which some center body is located. And on the center body is a blade. And we'll draw a control volume around that blade that extends down to the axis of rotation. There's the control volume. We're going to have to think in 3D a little bit, so the theta direction is coming out of the page, x is the axial direction, and then radial is coming off of the central axis. And so in general upstream we have velocity components ux, and we'll use uh, b to indicate the upstream location, urb, and u theta b, and that's located at radius rb. Now we're going to consider a stream surface at this radius that enters the control volume 
and has associated with it some mass flow m dot. And then we're going to con consider the same stream surface leaving the control volume, which is now at some possibly different radius rc, and has velocity components uxc, urc, and u theta c. And this blade and this center body are rotating around the center line here with angular velocity omega. So if we apply the conservation of angular momentum to this control volume analysis, Then basically, we get that the torque acting on the control volume is the time rate of change of the angular momentum, uh, in this case, of our stream surface through the device. So let's consider the theta component of the torque, since that's the axis of rotation, and that's going to be equal to the mass flow rate times u theta c r c minus u theta b r b because this is the angular momentum associated uh, about the theta direction associated with uh, the velocity going in and going out. Now this is true whether this blade row is rotating or not. This was originally a vector equation, so the sign matters here. So if t is greater than zero, uh, that will be when u theta c is greater than u theta b. Now if the blade row is rotating, So if, no, if omega is not zero, then there's going to be work exchanged between the blades and the fluid. And the rate at which work is done which is the same thing as the power is equal to the torque times the angular velocity or substituting in our expression wm dot u theta c rc minus u theta b rb so if omega over u theta c r c minus u theta b r e is positive, then the power is positive, which means work is done on the fluid, which means we have a compressor. And if omega over u theta c r c minus u theta b r b is negative, then the power is negative and work is done by the fluid. And we have a turbine.
Another way to look at this is to say that if u theta increases across the blade row, And again, this is where positive u theta is in the same direction as the angular velocity omega. Work is added. And we have a compressor. Whereas if u theta decreases across the blade row, work is removed from the flow and we have a turbine okay so now next consider the first law of thermodynamics applied to this control volume that's going to give us that m dot delta H T is the sum of shaft power and heat transfer. But we're going to consider this to be adiabatic, so Q dot is zero. And W dot S is the power P. So P is M dot times H T at C minus H T at B. Now, if we equate those two expressions for the power, what we get is HTC minus HTB equals omega RC U theta C minus RB U theta B. And for a perfect gas, where Cp is a constant, we can write this as Cp TTC minus TTB equals omega Rc U theta C minus Rb U theta B. And these, in whichever form you prefer, is the Euler turbine equation. Just confusing name because it applies equally to turbines and compressors. Now we can rewrite this. Cp TTB TTC over TTB minus one equals omega RC theta C minus R B E theta B. So this is nothing more than if it's for a whole machine, tau C. If it's for one blade row. Uh, it's less, but basically, this is something like tau C, and therefore it relates the temperature and hence the pressure ratio across a blade row to the rotational speed omega and the change in angular momentum. Now it's important to note that the velocities in this equation. Are absolute frame quantities. So again to recap for a compressor RC U theta C minus RB U theta B is greater than zero for omega positive means TTC is greater than TTB. 
and for a turbine RC u theta c minus RB u theta b is positive negative and so TTC is less than TTB